morning guys hey hey how are we all doing i bet you think i or thought i forgot about you yesterday because usually i go live in the fashion studio on mondays but today being top tip tuesday over in the fashion studio um i thought i would come to you with three really quick tips on how to elevate your sewing and make sure that you're producing really high-end good quality garments that blow ready to wear high street out of the water i am currently sat on the squeakiest chair you know when you go into like an apple store with a problem with your laptop and then it doesn't work when you're trying to show the guy at the genius bar that is literally my chair right now oh there we go see squeaky i wasn't lying um Anyway, so I thought I'd run you through um, some really quick, easy tips to implement on your sewing projects. If you have any quick tips or things that you do to really elevate your sewing projects, let me know in the comments. Let me know who's with me. I can see that three of you are online with me. Um, and I'm just going to blast through it. Some of these you might have already known if you um, got onto the resource library when it was a thing. Um, I did a 10 tips for high-end fashion garments. This is all now going to be available in the membership. So if you haven't um, signed up for the wait list for that, then go over and do it. The membership has literally got everything in it. Um, so my first tip, and it was drilled into me from my very early days of getting into this industry, was do not overlock woven garments or serge if you're american if that's the thing um do not overlock woven garments it is a sign of cheap construction it is a sign of poor quality so this here is a little um top shop cami that i've got throwing top shop under the bus but you know uh you know i don't support fast fashion just as a disclaimer any fast fashion items i do own are usually second hand off ebay or a gajillion years old um so if you can see that if that focuses how they finish that seam there is with an overlock stitch there's nothing wrong with it guys nothing at all i'm not criticizing anyone if you like to finish your garments like this at all these are just tips on how to elevate them into a more high-end um quality so instead of overlocking what we would do is we would choose to french seam we would choose to flat felt seam or you would choose to finish with maybe maybe like a bias bound finish um which in this first pair of asymmetric calottes you can see the inside of this here is all bias bound finished and that can be a design detail that can be, as you can see, it's contrasted colour here. So it can add to like the whole design and look of your garment. Again, in these, my latest pair of asymmetric collops with the clashing prints, which I love, um, I've chosen a blue bias bound finish there. And so, and yet the seams, I don't know if you can see that, are all French seamed. So I'm making sure that everything is enclosed and everything is as neat. They say you want the inside of your garment to be as beautiful as the outside of your garment. Tracy, I'm all about French seams on woven fabric. Absolutely. And if you, the, the smaller the seam and the neater you can make it, again, they say, whoever they are, um, that that is like a higher end detail as well. So if you're speaking like a chiffon or a really beautiful translucent fabric and you can make a five millimeter French seam, beautiful so nice um so that's my first tip my first tip is consider your construction techniques especially with wovens obviously we want to overlock knit fabrics stretch fabrics we need that kind of um thing for the stretch of the fabric what's the word i'm looking for it's tuesday now i don't even have an excuse that it's the start of the week i should be in this and raring to go um my second tip my friends is to pattern match um i have a really really good quick easy cheap way to match your patterns which i will make sure i do in the coming weeks over in the fashion studio if you haven't joined already just type in dpl fashion studio on facebook come over and join the group it's a really fun welcoming creative space um but to pattern match is a really good sign of high-end garments so here you can see that the horizontal lines on this um welsh prince check or whatever it's called prince of wales check um have aligned here if you have tops 
you're going to want your patterns to align at the side seams and if you had a stripe on a top you would want the horizontal stripe of that sleeve to align onto the bodice um shoulda woulda coulda you're the designer at the end of the day and this is your creative discretion if you don't want them to match don't have a match if you want them to contrast have them contrast but a good if you're going round high street shops if you're having a look on the hangers what you're gonna see in places like h&m and the cheap cheap fashion stores primark 100 percent um is a lack of pattern matching uh because not only can it be more wasteful which is true if you're trying to lay your patterns out on fabric and match it up um but it also takes more time and these fast fashion places do not have that and they want to maximize their already disgusting profit margins um and then finally guys i often don't overlock on dancewear leotard especially it leaves an unsightly ridge well they have flat locking in um active wear and that is basically even with overlocking as you rightly say tracy there's a um, ridge there's a bump on the seam which when that's against the wearer's skin especially in things like dancewear active wear yes 100 percent, that can be uncomfortable and so you'll find a lot of it's like an overlock but it's a flat lock stitch that basically clue is in the name um is a flat seam and it's a lot more comfortable or of course you have um seamless seamless knit seamless leggings all of that the idea of pattern matching blows my mind but i really want to work on it oliver i swear i have the easiest hack on how to pattern match i'm gonna make a note of that and i will make sure i deliver that to you guys next week in the fashion studio because god it's easy I had a tutor show me obviously years ago and I just thought really it looks as though it should be a lot harder than that but um obviously the effect and the quality it has on your garments in the long run it's worth doing it's so nice to pattern match um have you ever seen the ones where people haven't thought about pattern matching and you either have um or pattern placement print placement and you are I've seen um is it a meme is that what the word is of like a Winnie the Pooh an unfortunate Winnie the Pooh textile print going round where he's lined up against Piglet in a eyebrow raising manner um and then print placement where people have kind of put the prints on areas you don't really want to get attracted to um <laughs> anyway I digress finally guys and I'm afraid I'm going to end on the one that people aren't going to like the most to elevate your garments you're gonna have to consider just hear me out have an open mind hand sewing an area of it i know everybody hates hand sewing but even if you just hand sew your hems hand stitch those hems practice those blind stitch those slip stitch practice it all it can have a really beautiful high end <laughs> see someone's laughing in response to this uh, it can have a really really beautiful high end finish you're not gonna have visible stitching um it's going to be a beautiful invisible finish and it's really really going to elevate this into a more high-end beautiful couture garment even if you pick the smallest area you can just to practice your hand sewing it's going to take you so much further in the long run it really really is always hand finish hems 100% angie i'm with you um it's just gonna do the world of good and one of the biggest lessons i had to learn and i'm still learning is getting over impatience and this goes for twirling that i spoke about recently this goes for hand sewing 100 percent we are so quick to want to create create see the finished product see the finished article um but when you take those few more moments just to sit in front of the tv and hand finish those hems the results are so worth it and you are gonna see the quality in your sewing projects tenfold i promise you um so they are my three quick tips i know you're saying alex hand sewing is not a quick thing to do but <laughs> you get the gist you know what i meant um of course i have a fashion file pack if anybody wants to get into that i've got a fashion file pack on seams on hand sewing techniques the lot um so go over and check those out for sure um you're welcome tracy i'm glad you found those tips useful um so yeah let me know head over to the fashion studio if you've not joined us already let me know of any tips that you do to elevate your sewing and make that quality that much better um 
There are really easy approachable things to do and you can do it step by step without overwhelming yourself that things are outside of your comfort zone or your skill level. Um, this is how we improve and grow as designers and having attention to detail is probably the biggest rule of high-end garments. So consider your seam construction, match those patterns and prints and hand sew those hems. Kirsty, I'm challenging you. This time next week, I want you to share something in the fashion studio. Hand finish a hem. You don't have to do the whole of it. Just do a little practice, pop it in your fashion file. Um, Kirsty, you're always late to the party, my love, but I forgive you for it. You can always catch up on replay. And the point is you're here and you're joining me and I love you to the end of the earth. Um, have a really good day, guys. I am gonna get back to some pattern cutting. I've got my heater on full blast. And I'm just settling into my Tuesday. Um, catch up with me in the DPL Fashion Studio, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you on the flip side. Bye. <laughs>